righty. Well, good morning to everyone. Welcome today to the house of the Lord. And uh, this uh, Sunday after Thanksgiving, I guess we officially get into the Christmas season, I guess. And so I trust everybody had a good Thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Wonderful day. Well, the Lord's blessed us and we should still be overflowing with thankfulness. Just because Thanksgiving Day is gone, don't mean we can't be thankful. For God has been good to us and blessed us with another day. Another opportunity to be in the house of God. And it sure is good uh, to see everyone here uh, this morning. And uh, good to have folks together with us. By the way, of our technology, technology does have a good side. Amen. And so the Word of God is still going forth and folks are still getting to go to church. And so we thank God for that. Well, uh, we're glad to see you today and we're going to get things started right off. So if you'll stand with me, we're going to sing this great, great old hymn, How Great Thou Art. Let's stand together and sing this morning. Shall come with shall. 
shout of acclamation and take me home. What joy shall fill my heart? Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my God how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Amen, and how great he is. Amen, praise the Lord this morning. Thank you for singing. Isn't that a good song to sing? Uh, all the time, especially this time of year. Uh, praise the Lord for that. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray. We mentioned in Sunday school this morning uh, for Brother Marvin Thompson. Uh, Brother Marvin is in Roanoke on life support uh, as we speak, and uh, uh, they tried to. They tried yesterday uh, to remove that from him. It didn't work out well, so they had to put him back on. I think they're going to try again tomorrow, and so uh, we just need to pray for that family, and uh, and uh, it's Brother Jeff Thompson's father. And uh, so remember the Thompson family today. Continue to pray for Russ and Lori uh, today in your prayers. And uh, continue to remember our folks that are fighting surgeries and all those things. Uh, um, let's pray for Barbara Steele uh, today. And continue to pray with Gail Connor. And uh, am I leaving somebody out? Yeah, well, we need to continue to pray with Sh uh, yeah, Sherry and Devin and, and uh, uh, Gary and Lisa. Goins, we need to remember them in prayer today. Yes. Pastor Edmund, I'll see if he'll be here in work too next week. He's been having surgery, so I'm afraid it's just going to go through <laughs> four to five days ago. Okay, let's pray for this young lady today. Anybody else? Well, God's good, isn't he? Yes, ma'am. Okay, pray for Maggie. Yeah, amen, that's right. Let's thank God today for his goodness, amen. Well, God has been good to us and blessed us, and, and uh, let's pray for our nation. Of course, we should always be praying for our nation, and uh, praying for the Lord to intervene, amen, because we need God's help. Let's look to the Lord in prayer this morning. Our Father, which art in heaven, dear God, as we gather in your presence again on this Lord's day, we're thankful, God, for the place together. And the promise that you'll gather with us, Lord. Father, forgive us of our sin and our failure. We fail, Father, to trust. We fail, Father, to look unto you. Now, Father, we ask you, Lord, to help us today. And Lord, help us be mindful of your presence. Lord, respect that. Love that. Thank you, God, for mercy and grace. Lord, that is sufficient for any day and all days of our life. Thank you, God, for your watch care and your protection over us, Father, through another week. We thank you for this week of Thanksgiving. Now, Lord, we're going to look to Christmas, be reminded of the Christ child that came in Bethlehem to seek and to save that which was lost. Thank you, God, for these in the house of God today. For those listening by the way of live stream, we pray for them. We pray for families in need today, families still fighting COVID. Lord, some, Lord, are just needing a touch of your mighty hand. These in our families and our church, Lord, that are sick today. We ask you, Lord, for relief for them. Thank you, God, that things are going well. We thank you for these that you've healed and lifted up. We pray for those, Father, that are facing other things, cancer and surgeries. And, uh, Lord, we just pray for these that's been mentioned today. Lord, you know they're the very need. And, God, we just ask you, Lord, to intervene on behalf of them today. And, Father, we pray for those that are lost. Lord, we ask for revival in this land. Give us the word, Father, to give to somebody today that might lead them to Christ, lead them to Calvary, that they might be saved. Father, Lord, we ask you to uh, help our nation. 
the leadership of our nation. Pray for our president today, that you'll be with him, God, and undergird him with strength and wisdom and knowledge and help, Father, to do the right things. And Father, not only there, but Lord, in the leadership in our state, in the local church, God, we ask you to protect and watch over the local church, God. Father, we know that this is your church, it's your place. And Father, we want to treat it with great respect and give the right words that, that people might be saved. Thank you, God, again today for allowing us to be in your house. Bless those who couldn't be here for whatever reason this morning. Lord, maybe they're fighting sickness. Maybe they're fighting doubt. Lord, we just pray, God, you'll help them, Lord. And, and maybe they're being safe. And Father, that's okay. We just pray, Father, you'll help them, Lord, to get something from the Word of God today. Lord, help us now. Lead us in this service. May it please thee. In Christ's name we ask and pray. Amen. Thank you. you may be seated. Stacy's going to come and uh, sing for us this morning. So you pray for Stacy as she comes and sings. Please stand. We're going to sing. Tell me the story of Jesus. Please stand. Tell me the story of Jesus. Right on my heart, every word. Tell me the story, most precious. 
sweetest that ever was heard. Tell how the angels in chorus sang as they welcomed his birth. <clears throat> Glory to God in the highest, peace and good tidings to earth. Tell me the story of Jesus, write on my heart every word. Tell me the story most precious, sweetest that ever was heard. Fasting alone in the desert, tell of the days that are past. How for our sins he was tempted, yet was triumphant at last. Tell of the years of his labor, tell of the sorrow he bore. He was despised and afflicted, homeless, rejected, and poor. Tell me the story of Jesus. Write on my heart every word. Tell me the story most precious, sweetest that ever was heard. Tell of the cross where they nailed him, writhing in anguish and pain. Tell grave where they laid him, tell how he liveth again. Love in that story so tender, clearer than ever I see. Stay, let me weep while you whisper, love pay the for me. Tell me the story of Jesus, write on my heart every word. Tell me the story most precious, sweetest that ever was heard. Thank you. you may be seated. Amen. Let me give you today what our Dollar for Missions is for. Uh, this time of year, we begin to get, uh, uh, of course, a lot of requests and a lot of things going on and, and uh, a lot of needs. Now, let me say this. Junior church, or I guess you can be dismissed at this time. If you're in the junior church, then you can make your way to your class at this time. Okay? Uh, so we get a lot of requests this time of year, and this is one that we participate in, I guess, every year. At this time, this uh, is Tender Mercies. That's here in town, uh, located here up on West Main Street. And uh, every year, they do what they call a, um, uh, a ham drive. They try to give out, uh, he tells me in this letter, let me read to it. It's that time of year when we have a special fundraiser. As in years past, we hope to give a three-pound uh, uh, canned ham. Uh, to each family that we serve for Christmas season. This year we are projecting handing out 700 hams. We will begin handing them out on uh, November the 30th, which is tomorrow, and continue through uh, uh, December the 22nd, uh, which is the last day we hand out food before Christmas. And so the total on that uh, for them to do that is $5,400. So uh, we help them with this every year. And so if you can give today to that, that's your dollar for mission fund today. You You'll see a place out there where the offering plates are for your dollar for mission. And if you can help Tender Mercies, they're a good, they're a good group here in town that helps people, feed people, provide food for people, uh, especially this time of year and all year. They work all year. So if you can help Tender Mercies with that, you do so in the designated place 
uh, as you leave today. Okay? All right, Stacy, you come back and sing another song for us this morning. A friend of mine um, sent me this song last week. I'm going to try not to cry. <laughs> um, it truly touched my heart. Um, it's about the power of prayer. And I so related to it so many times in the middle of the night. The Lord will speak to me about someone. And I can also feel the power of people praying for me when I'm going through things in my family. So I'm going to try to get through this song. This is for my friend uh, Meredith. <clears throat> Yes. That's right. Amen. 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 Isn't it good to know somebody's praying for you? Isn't it good to know we can pray? Isn't it good to know we have somebody to pray to? Who hears our prayer? And helps us in the midst of whatever. Uh, he's God. Amen. And he helps us. And She said something that is so true. He doesn't necessarily always take us out of it. But he makes a way through. It. Amen. And we just praise God for that today. I want you to open your Bibles this morning with me to the book of 2 Samuel. Book of 2 Samuel chapter number 7. I've been tossing around 
Of course, we have officially, I guess, we could say entered into the Christmas season. We'll look more like it next week when you come here. But, but uh, 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 we've officially entered into uh, what we call the Christmas season. And, and uh, so many times, and I like to develop sermons around Christmas, and uh, sometimes that's hard to do. But because, you, don't, you know, you preach so much about Christmas. But I began to think about some things and work on some things. And, and I had some things all planned out and all things ready to roll and had it all typed out, you know, and the, the outline I want to follow. And I threw it in the trash yesterday. <laughs> because the Lord told me, you need to do something else. And so I've been reading. Uh, I've been reading here for a little while and... Uh, and, and th- there's a thought that came to my mind some time ago, and I'm going to still stay with the thought. I'm just not going to use the notes uh, because I'm going to take a different direction this morning. But I began to think about Christmas. And what does that little baby mean that was born in Bethlehem? Well, let me tell you what, what my, message, my series of messages is going to be over the next few Sundays. And that's going to be this, Christmas promises that, well, let's see. The Christmas promises that was re- Christ fulfilled or is yet to fulfill. There is some promises made of God in the Old Testament that's yet to be fulfilled. Amen. Some of them have been fulfilled. Some are yet to be fulfilled. Some of them are fulfilled in two parts. We're going to look at one today that was, was fulfilled in one part, yet to be fulfilled in a second part. Uh, and it, was, it will be fulfilled through this baby that was born in Bethlehem. His name is Jesus Christ. Amen. You see, and there's many things when you study the birth of Christ, how it took place, where it took place, all this was given to us ahead of time in the Scriptures. You see, and, and, and it was given to us by God through the prophets and through the people that He commissioned to wake us up and make us look and expect certain things. And by the way, there is still some things that God gave us that we need to wake up and look and still be expecting to happen because they're promises of God. And so there's some promises that Christmas has fulfilled or will yet fulfill in the future. Now when you come to uh, the book of Second Samuel chapter number seven, and we're going to read several verses, but I think we'll just preach through them as we read them. Uh, we're going to go all the way down through verse 17 this morning. And David here, uh, David has a heart's desire. When, we, when this chapter opens up, David has a heart's desire. God has been good to him. God has blessed him. God has helped him. And, and David is the warrior, you see, and, and he's, he's the man after God's own heart, and God has been good to him. God has helped him. God has blessed him. But yet David wants to do something for God. But I want you to notice what God says to him. And what God says to him has everything to do with you and I today. And the things that he'll talk about that will happen, it'll be fulfilled in two parts. Solomon will, will fulfill part of it. And then this baby in Bethlehem is going to fulfill the other part of it. And so let's begin here as we think about uh, these promises that God has made. And uh, you understand that in in the Old Testament, as you go through the Old Testament, there's many, many references to the king of kings uh, who will rule and reign this world one of these days. There's many references to the kingdom of God. Understand that the prophets knew nothing of the church age. They knew nothing of the age in which you and I live in today. You see, when they talk of the kingdom of God, they talk of a time when Christ will rule and reign. You see, and we come to when Christ came, and then we were introduced to the church age, and then Peter and them began to talk about a rapture. Amen. A rapture of this church, a rapture that you and I are still waiting on to happen. You see, then we entered into the church age, and, and Peter and Paul and all of them began to preach of the church age. You see, the church was started in the book of Acts. And we'll see what, and by the way, we're going, to, we're going to end up today in Peter's message at Pentecost and what he said concerning this patriarch David. You see, they began to understand about a coming 
king of kings. They begin to understand that we've got to leave this earth in order to come back and rule and reign with our Lord Jesus Christ. Those begin to understand, by the way, this baby in Bethlehem began to bring to light all of these things that God had so forth set, for, set forth in the Old Testament. You understand, Christ became the answer. Christ is still the answer today in which we live. You see, in our text today, we see King David and his desire to build a house for God. But God has other plans. I want you to pay attention to some of the things that is said to, to Nathan, the, the, the prophet, concerning David's desire to build his house and what he'll have to tell David. And, 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 and of course, you know, David will not be the one to build the house. Solomon will build it. We know all that and we'll see some of that this morning. Uh, now, what I want you to understand is that God's plans are not always our plans. But God knows the future and God knows what is needed to accomplish his plan. You and it's no accident you and I are living in the day we're living. It's all part of what God is doing. Amen? You see, you understand that the age in which we live and which we know as the church age must come to an end. I don't know when that is. I don't know if it's today, if it's tomorrow, or if I'll leave here and it'll be sometime after I'm gone. I don't know that. All I know is the church age, the age in which you live, will end one of these days. The day of grace will run out. Time will quit. And where are we going to be? Well, it has everything to do with what you do with the babe in the manger. It has everything to do with your decision about Christ. It don't matter whether you're wealthy it doesn't matter whether you're poor. Uh, it don't matter whether you're popular or unpopular. It matters what you do with Christ. Now there's people shaking their head at that and shaking their fist at that and you just go right ahead and shake up a storm. Because it don't matter. It matters what you do with Christ. That's all that's going to matter. And God has laid down a perfect plan. He's given it to us in the Word of God. It's flawless. It will not fail. It is perfect. You see, we must understand that our ideas and plans that we have, they are temporal. Everything you're planning to do, every plan you've made in the future is a temporal plan. Amen. And you understand that God doesn't deal in temporal. But God deals in eternal. You see, because God is eternal. He's from everlasting to everlasting. He is God. So let's preach through uh, verse, the first 17 verses. And I'm going to hurry as quick as I can. There's a whole lot of stuff here. When you get into the scriptures and what God is saying here in this prophecy, Nathan's prophecy to David concerning the house of, the, of God. It has far reaching. It reaches far out there. Now let's notice in verse number one. And it came to pass when the king sat in his house. Now the king is King David. And the Lord had given him rest round about from all his enemies. He's finding a time of peace. He's finding a time of rest. He's the warrior king. He's God's man. And, he, and, and, he's, and he's found himself in the house that God had blessed him with at a time of rest. He's resting. God has given him a time of rest. I thank God for a time of rest, don't you? I thank God that God gives us a time of peace, a time to rest. Verse 2, that the king said unto Nathan the prophet. Now, uh, they put a lot of confidence in the prophet. That David said unto Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwelleth within curtains. He's beginning to think of this magnificent home that he's living in, this house of cedar and how beautiful, no doubt, how beautiful it must have been and how magnificent it must have been to be sitting in the house that God had blessed him with. And yet he begins to think about God and the presence of God. By the way, he mentions the ark of God. And you understand, the ark of God represents the presence of God. And he said, look, look at what I'm living in. But yet God is dwelling in a tent. God should be living here and I should be in the tent. You see. 
He says, but the ark of God dwelleth in curtains. And Nathan said to the king, now here's what the prophet says. This is what the prophet says before God talks to him. Amen. And Nathan said to the king, go and do all that is in thine heart, for the Lord is with thee. Oh, David, that's a good idea. Maybe you ought to build God a house. Maybe you ought to build God a place so he doesn't have to live in a tent. So he doesn't have to live in them curtains. God deserves that. No, Nathan says, that's a good idea. God is with thee. Go do that. But watch out what happens here. In the next verse, God begins to speak. And here's what he says. And it came to pass that night that the word of the Lord came unto Nathan saying, Go and tell my servant David, Thus saith the Lord, Shalt thou build me a house to dwell in? He's asking him a question. You go ask David, Shalt thou build me a house to dwell in? Is that what you want to do? Is that what you think you're going to do? Is that what you, your purpose is? I notice. He says in verse 6, Whereas I have not dwelt in any house since the time that I brought up the children of Israel, the children of Israel out of Egypt, even to this day, but I have walked in a tent and in a tabernacle. He said, you tell David that up to this day, I've been content to dwell where I dwell. You see, I haven't dwelled in a house from the time we left out of Egypt to the, till now, David. I've not dwelt in a house. I've dwelt in the tent. Let me tell you where this tent was. This tent was in amongst his people. God was content to dwell amongst his people. Can I tell you today that God is content to dwell among his people. Yes, God has blessed us with a beautiful place and a beautiful building and beautiful buildings. But this is not God's dwelling place. God's dwelling place is in the heart of every believer. Amen. No, God, this is God's house and we are respect it as God's house and we're to treat it with great respect. But if you're a believer, God dwells in your heart. And by the way, he's content to dwell in your heart. Amen. He's content to take up residence in your heart today. Verse number seven. In all the places wherein I have walked with all the children of Israel, spake I a word with any of the tribes of Israel, whom I commanded to feed my people Israel, saying, Why build ye me not in house of cedar? You know what God said? All this time, you tell David, all this time, I've walked with you and all this time I've talked with you and all this time I've blessed you. Was there ever a time I said you ought to build me a house? Was there ever a time, David, that I asked any of the tribes of Israel to build me a house? You see, I was content, David, to dwell among my people. To, to lodge where my people are. Can I tell you, God dwells with us. He lodges among us. He's ever present with us today. Now, he says in verse 8, now what you have here is the Davidic covenant. Now, therefore, so shalt thou say unto my servant David, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheep coat, from following the sheep to be ruler over my people, over Israel. He said, you tell David, let's take a little step backwards and let's remind David where he was at when I found him. Let's remind David what he was doing when I found him. You remember when they went looking for a king, they didn't find him in the house. He was out tending the sheep out in the field. Uh, the rest of them had rode him off and the rest of them said he can't do it. He's little old ruddy David. What is he gonna do? But God said out there in the sheep coat is the one I want because he's got the heart that's gonna be big enough and wide enough for God to dwell in. Amen. Let's remind David where he came. How many of us today remember where we came from? How many of us remember where we were headed until God said, I'm going out there and getting him so I can dwell in him. Amen. You see, 
We were outcast. We were outreached. And God found us. Huh. Amen. And so let's remind David a little bit of where it started and what, what happened and all the things that it's done. And he said in verse number 9, he goes on to say, And I was with thee whithersoever thou wentest, and have cut off all thine enemies out of thy sight, and have made thee a great name, like unto the name of the great men that are in the earth. And he said, I took you from the sheep coat, and now look at what has happened. Your name is great. You've become a great man, and you've become a powerful man. You have become a great warrior for God. You're the things that God had done for him. Listen, today you and I would remind ourselves what God has done for us. Amen. Sometimes when we get too high on our high horse, we need to come off of it a little bit and remind ourselves what God has done for us. Verse number 10, here's what he said. Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel. Now this is what I want you to pay attention to what he's saying. I will appoint a place for my people Israel. And I will plant them. Now let's look at this. That they may dwell in a place of their own. This has far-reaching fulfillment. And move no more. They're not going to have to run anymore. They're not going to have to hide anymore. Huh. Amen. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them anymore as before time. Talking about the nation of Israel. And let me tell you, Israel will dwell in the land God has promised them. I don't care what the Arabs say. I don't care what these, these guys say. They will dwell in the land that God gave them. That's God's promise to them. And he's telling David, listen, David, there's going to come a time when your people, Israel, are not going to have to run and hide anymore. They're not going to have to be afraid anymore. And they're going to have a place that I promised them. And nobody will move them out of there. Nobody will run them out of there. And let's jump into the Gentiles. By the way, we're the Gentiles. God has prepared a place for us. Amen. That nobody can run us off. Nobody can take away from us. It belongs to us because God gave it to us. Oh. I will appoint a place, he said, for my children. Israel, I want you to hold your place. We're going to look at other scripture this morning. I want you to go to the book of Psalm. Psalm 89. Psalm 89. I want to begin reading. Verse 20. That's God's covenant with David. You see, verse 20 says, I have found David my servant with my holy oil, have anointed him, with whom my hand shall be established, mine arm also shall strengthen him, the enemy shall not exact upon him, nor the son of wickedness afflict him, and I will beat down his foes before his face, and plague them that hate him, but my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. And in my name shall his horn be exalted. Amen. You see, he shall cry unto me, Thou art my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. Also I will make him my firstborn higher than the kings of the earth. My mercy will I keep for him forever, and my covenant shall stand fast with him. You see, God's promise to David He's going to do exactly uh, what he has promised David he'd do. Isaiah, flip over with me to Isaiah chapter number 60. This may be more of the Bible study this morning. But Isaiah chapter number 60. I want you to understand that the word of God is powerful today. And the promises are real. Isaiah chapter number 60, verse 18. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land, wasting nor destruction within thy borders, but thou shalt call thy wall salvation and thy gates praise. Speaking to the people of Israel. And then there's one other place, and I'm going to turn over the book of Revelation. In the book of Revelation, chapter number 20, 
We're going to get back to our Revelation messages after Christmas, but in Revelation chapter 20, beginning in verse number 1, I want you to just look what the Bible says. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. Now look at what happens. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Now remember what he has just told David, that no more, uh, neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them any more as before time. Look in Revelation chapter 20, what he's done, done. He's done chained up the devil. He's done chained up Satan. Amen. And verse 3 says, And cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years shall be fulfilled. And after that he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon them, upon their foreheads, or in their hands and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years you'll see what he's talking about here gets fulfilled in Christ yet in the future amen now let's move on he continues on here and as since notice what he says in verse 11 of our text and as since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel and have caused thee to rest From all thine enemies. Oh boy, this is what I like. I'm going to tell you something. This next sentence is shouting ground. Look what he said. Also the Lord telleth thee that he will make thee a house. David, you don't have to build me a house. I've gone to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, uh, there you may be also. He said, I'll build you a house. He's not talking about a house of wood and of cedar. He's talking about eternal house. Amen. Listen, God has gone to prepare me and you a house. Christ is preparing you and I a house today as we endure hardships as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Oh, just beyond the veil of tears, just beyond the land of which we cannot see, there is preparations of a place for us to dwell in. He has promised to come and get us. You know where that promise started? It started in a manger in Bethlehem. Christ will fulfill that promise. You see, David, I will make you a house. Now, verse 12, And when the days were fulfilled, and when the days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. Look at verse 13. And he shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Now, there's two, there's two full fulfillment here. The first one, David's son Solomon. You know the story? Solomon will be allowed to build that temple. It becomes, becomes known as Solomon's temple. And Solomon will be allowed to build this temple uh, that, that God is talking about here. I want you to turn over to the book of 1 Kings for just a moment. We're going to read a couple of quick places in the book of 1 Kings. In 1 Kings chapter number 5 and verse number 5, the Bible says, And behold, I purpose to build a house. Now this is Solomon preparing the temple. And behold, I purpose to build a house under the name of the Lord my God. As the Lord spake unto David my father, saying, Thy son, whom I will set up upon thy throne in thy room, he shall build a house unto my name. So there's Solomon preparing to build this temple. Now, let's go over to uh, 1 Kings chapter number 8. Beginning in verse about verse uh, 16. Since the day that I brought forth my people Israel out of Egypt, I chose no city out of all the tribes of Israel to build a house that my name might be therein. But I chose David to be over my people Israel. 
And it was in the heart of David, my father, to build an house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. And the Lord said unto David, my father, whereas it was in thine heart to build an house unto my name, thou didst well that it was in thine heart. Nevertheless, thou shalt not build thy house, but thy son shall come out shall come forth out of thy loins. He shall build the house unto my name. And the Lord hath performed this word, and he spake, and I am risen up in the room of David my father, and sit on the throne of Israel, as the Lord promised, and I have built a house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. And I have set there a place for the ark, wherein is the covenant of the Lord, which he made with our fathers, which he brought them out of the land of Egypt. So we see Solomon will be allowed to build this great temple for God, and God will allow him to build that temple. That was that fulfillment in that day. But notice he also said in verse 13 that his kingdom would be forever. That couldn't be Solomon, could it? Well, Solomon would die. David will die. We'll see that in just a moment. What Peter says about that. In verse 14, I will be his father and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. Speaking of Solomon, we know the story of Solomon. Solomon went on and fell into the traps of, 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 of women and fell away from God. But, but God never reneged on his promise, did he? No, he didn't. God will not renege on his promise, you see. He said, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes. But notice what he says in verse 15. But my mercy shall not depart away from him. Amen. What God says he'll do, he'll do. No matter what we do. Amen. No matter what we do, God will do what he says. He wants to use us in this preparation. But understand, God will do what he says. He says, that my mercy shall not depart away from him as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee, And thine house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. According to all these words and according to all this vision, so did Nathan speak unto David. I want to read one more place back in Psalm 89. We were just there. Back in Psalm 89. Messianic Psalm here. But I want you to begin with me. Uh, down in verse 35. I want to read 35 down through 37. Well, the Bible says, Nevertheless, my loving kindness will I not utterly take from him, nor suffer my faithfulness to fail. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. Once I have sworn by my holiness that I will not lie unto David, His seed shall endure forever, and his throne as the sun before me. It shall be established forever as the moon, and as a faithful witness in heaven. The fulfillment of God's promise. When you study the children of Israel, and you study the kings, and and you study the kings of Judah, you will learn that the last king of Judah will be King Zedekiah. Zedekiah will be a puppet king to Nebuchadnezzar. And he'll, and, and he'll be taken to Babylon. If you remember, his sons will be killed before him and they'll pluck out his eyes and they'll take him to Babylon and he'll die in Babylon and there'll be no king. There'll be no king to sit on the throne. But God made a promise, didn't he? That there'll come a king to sit on the throne of David. Now that brings us to a manger in Bethlehem. Amen. Amen. That brings us to a manger in Bethlehem of a, of a child that was born. Unusual way was born. And we're going to talk about some of that as we go through this series of sermons. Uh, an unusual way was born. An unusual place he was born. But he was born as a king. He is a king. And he will sit on the throne of David. There is still a king ready to sit on the throne. 
His name is Jesus. How do you know that, preacher? Well, let's go to the New Testament for a little while, and we're going to be done. I want you to see the fulfillment of what God told, promised David here in this Davidic covenant. In Matthew, let's start in Matthew chapter number 1, and we're just going to read verse 1. And really, we could stop right there, but there are some other things. I want you to see what he told Mary. Then I want you to see what Peter told him on the day of Pentecost. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 1, the Bible says, the book of the generation of Jesus Christ. What's the next few words? The son of David, the son of Abraham. Amen. Well, we can stop right there and say that's enough. Amen. The son of David, because the son of David, that's going to sit on the throne. Amen. Oh, let's go a little further. Let's go to Luke uh, chapter number 1. Here's Mary. Mary going to get a visit from the angel Gabriel. By the way, Mary is a virgin. I'm going to preach on that next week. Amen. Mary is a virgin. But look here. She gets a visit from the angel. And I want to begin. Matter of fact, let's begin a little bit before that. Let's, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, let's see. I'm trying to think here. Okay, let's... let's Oh, no, let's start, let's start in verse 26. And in the sixth month, that's where we, she gets her visit. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent forth from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. To a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail. Thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying. And cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth, uh, and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. But notice this. Notice verse 32 and 33. He shall be great. He shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Who's going to sit on the throne? Huh? Who's going to sit on the throne? It was given to him. Amen. Amen. Verse 33, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Amen. Amen. God keep his promise. It's coming. It was born in Bethlehem. Amen. It's ascended to the Father. It's getting ready to return to take his rightful ownership and his rightful place. On the throne that yet is vacant, there is a king. Now, I want, you to, I want you also to go in the same chapter, verse 68. Now, we have the song of Zacharias. Zacharias was the father of John the Baptist. I just want to pay attention to a few verses and what he says here. Begin in verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Who hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have since which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies. Amen. Who's going to do that? This baby. And we shall be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham, that he should grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. The fulfillment comes in Christ. Now I'm going one place, one other place, and I'm done this morning. I want you to go with me 
to a sermon that was preached at Pentecost. Acts chapter number 2. Acts chapter number 2, and we're going to begin in verse 22. I, I, I studied this passage of Scripture not too long ago because the question was asked me. And I began to study, and I began to say, oh my goodness, do you see what Peter is saying? Peter is absolutely giving us the fulfillment of God's promise to David. You see. Now, let's begin in verse 22 and just look with me at some things here as we go through this. Now, this is Peter's, you might say, sermon at Pentecost. It was his sermon at Pentecost. Preached that powerful sermon. And many, what, 3,000 souls were saved? But pay attention what he says here, beginning in verse 22. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God hath ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. Now he's talking to the people of Israel. You crucified him. Your wicked hands took him and crucified him. But everything he's doing, he's doing for you. Amen. Can you understand this world today that's cursing God, everything he done, he done for them? Everything Christ did, he did for everybody, everywhere, for God so loved the world. Let's go on. Verse 24. Whom God hath raised up. You didn't win, by the way. God won. <laughs> Whom God, <laughs> Amen. Whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holding of it. Huh? For David, now, here, now he's going to talk about David. He's going back to David. Now pay attention to what he said. For David speaketh concerning him. For I foresaw the Lord always before my face. For he is on my right hand that I should not be moved. Therefore, did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope. Amen. Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Uh, you can go back. Speaking of Christ here, you see, Christ wouldn't stay in that grave. Amen. You see, he wouldn't stay in that hell. He would come out of it. Now, notice what he's saying. He's speaking of Christ here. Let's see. Verse 28. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. Now, here's what he says in verse 29. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David that he is both dead and buried and his sepulcher is with us unto this day. Here's what he's saying. What the scriptures is talking about couldn't be talking about David because I can take you to David's grave and he's still in there. Amen. We can go by and pay a visit to David's tomb and he's still in there. Amen. But I believe we might, he may have went on to say, but I can take you to a garden tomb. And, and, and the king, the baby that was born to be king, he's not in there. But David's still there. The scriptures is not talking about David. Well, verse 30, Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him, that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ, to sit on his throne. Amen. The very one you've crucified, the very one you hung on a tree, is the one he's raised up to sit on the throne. Boy, Peter's preaching this. Amen. 
He's seeing this before. Spake of the resurrection of Christ. That his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus hath God raised up. Man didn't do it. God did it. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we are all witnesses. Peter said, I seen him. Amen. Oh, Peter could say, I walk with him. Amen. Peter might even say, I denied him, but oh, he loved me. He had grace upon me. Peter said, I watched him. I, I came walking on the water to him. I watched him raise the dead. I watched him speak to the sick and the lame. I watched him give sight to the blind. I saw him. He's the one God raised up. He's the one God has appointed to sit on the throne. You see. Therefore, Verse 33, being by the right hand of God exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended in the heavens. <laughs> David didn't raise for you. David didn't ascend into the heavens for us. Amen. For David is not ascended in the heavens, but he saith himself, David, the Lord said unto my Lord, set thou on my right hand until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made this same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and promise given to David had a fulfillment in David's day David's son Solomon would rise up and build the temple but there's a future promise that David was given the, of that that throne will not remain empty David there'll be a king set on your throne you know who that is it's that baby born in Bethlehem you see, he will come again, take his rightful place on the throne of David. The throne will once again be occupied. Christmas is the fulfillment of that promise. Amen? A Christ child is the fulfillment of that promise. Over the next few weeks, I'm going to look at some other promises that was being given to us that Christmas fulfilled. And next Sunday, I'm going to talk about impossibility. Aren't you glad you've got a God that works in impossibility? When it has become impossible to do, when the world says it cannot be done, I know somebody who can. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Christmas has fulfilled promises and will yet fulfill promises in the future. Father, thank you, Lord, for giving us time together this morning in the house of God. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy and your goodness. Lord, you've been so good to us. And Father, we ask you to forgive us today. Father, if there's one today that doesn't know this Jesus, I pray they might be saved. Well, you're coming again. You're coming. I believe it could be any time. But, Lord, you're coming. And so, Father, let us have our hearts ready to meet you in the air. And Lord, we know you're coming to take your rightful place on the throne. Lord, you deserve that. You're Lord and Savior. Father, help our people today to be looking for the coming of Christ. Be faithful. God, I pray souls will be saved. Lord, we know as we talked about in Sunday school that you're, you're long-suffering, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Maybe you haven't come yet because somebody's still lost. You're giving them one more time to be saved. God help us today in this invitation time. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Heads remain bowed. And eyes closed. People of God praying. If you're here today and you're not saved, can I tell you, Jesus is coming. You may say, preacher, I don't believe that. And that's, that's your business. But that won't stop his coming. It'll just prove you wrong one of these days.
I said in my mind a long time ago that he had the answer. I don't agree with everything that goes on, but I do know this. Jesus is coming after me one of these days. I'm ready to go. I hope you are as well. If you're not, why not come and let us show you how? How you can know you're ready to go should the Lord come today. And you that are here that are Christians this morning, you've got a whole lot to pray about. You've got a whole lot of people to pray for. Our world needs your prayers. We're headed down a steep slope very fast. But God's still in control. And so, as children of God, why not just rest safely in the arms of God today? For He has the right plan. So let's take a moment and pray and as she plays. And if you need to pray at the altar, you come. If you want us to pray with you, we will. Or if you're here lost and you want to be saved, don't wait till tomorrow. Tomorrow, eternity may have started. So let's get right with God. Our Father, we thank you, God, for your grace and mercy. Father, I pray for every prayer request that's been prayed. I pray, Father, for an answer to that request. For a lost soul, I pray for them to be saved. For a wayward soul, I pray for them to come home. Well, Father, we pray for those that are sick and those in need. Lord, help. Father, send revival to this land. For, Lord, we, are, we know one of these days you're going to rule and reign from that throne of David. And Lord, I just, I want to be in that number. I'll be in that number because of the grace of God. Forgive us, Lord, of our sin. Help us, God, to be mindful. But now's the time, more than ever, to be faithful to you. Or thank you, Father, for your time today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you much. Let me give you a couple announcements, and then Pastor Mays probably has some. And uh, um, I will say this, that immediately following the service this morning, I need everybody that's participating in Night in Bethlehem to stay back for a few minutes. This will probably be the last meeting we can have uh, before that. Maybe, and, I mean, if we need to, we can call another one, but, but uh, I need you to stay back for just a few minutes, and we need to see what's lacking, what we need to do. If you want, you say, well, I didn't sign up, but I want to help you stay too. Now, we can use all the hands we can get, okay? Now, the last time I checked, the weather was going to be okay. Now, it's cold, but it's going to be okay, unless it's changed since I last saw. Temperature is going to plummet a little bit, uh, but nothing not we can't stand. Uh, so, uh, but anyway, we've been there before, haven't we? And uh, so, uh, if you can help with us, we sure could use your help uh, somewhere and somehow. So, uh, keep that in mind. Uh, and stay with us just a few minutes, and we'll turn you loose. And then, um, uh, let's see, tomorrow, 5 o'clock, if you've got a free hand, can help us. We are decorating for Christmas. So we're going to have the tree up, and we're going to decorate all our stuff we normally decorate. Some folks have already brought some poinsettias. You begin to bring them. That's wonderful. And if you want to bring them in honor and memory of somebody, if you bring one in memory of somebody, then you be sure you turn that into the office. We will have an insert in the bulletin probably on the Sunday before Christmas. So keep that in mind and bring 
bring your poinsettias, bring your hands, and help us tomorrow, 5 o'clock. It's according to how many people we got. It's how long we stay. Uh, so, uh, and uh, if you're new to the church and you want an ornament on our tree, uh, we've got families that puts ornaments on the tree every year, and uh, you bring your ornament and put it on there. The tree will be up after tomorrow. Okay? So you can do that as well. And then I will make a I will make a announcement. We're going to retract a little bit uh, on the Christmas cards. And we told you last time we wasn't going to do any Christmas cards. And I went home couldn't couldn't hardly, couldn't hardly live with that. Uh, here's 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 my here's my here's my thought on that. And I may be wrong. And if you think I'm wrong, you can tell me. Um, but I think if we don't watch, we're going to allow this world to take our our celebration plumb away from us. That's what they want to do. They want, to, they want a black cloud to hang over us, a gray cloud. They want to celebrate Christmas. You know, even, even announcement, don't gather up as a family for Thanksgiving. Well, fool you on that. You let them stay home and suffer. Uh, they want to take everything away from you. So here's what we're going to do. The Christmas cards are back in. But we're going to put the, the mailbox, the mailbox is behind the Welcome Center. So if you want to put Christmas, if you want to give Christmas cards, you bring your Christmas cards, turn them into the Welcome Center, they will put them in there. And then starting the next couple of Sundays, they'll begin to put those together. That way there's only just a minimal number of hands handling the Christmas card, okay? And they'll handle you, give you your Christmas cards in bundles uh, as you go pick them up. So it'll all, be, it'll all be done through the Welcome Center back there. And so you can, you can give your Christmas cards. And uh, I enjoy them, amen? And... Uh, and we're going to see that the folks that are not coming, uh, the shut-ins and so forth, will get theirs. And so so uh, we're just going to back up a little bit and, and give our Christmas cards, okay? And I think that's a good way to do it. And if you say, I don't want nothing to do with that, then don't, don't say none or don't get none. I mean, that's just the way it is. <laughs> Nobody else sends you one. <laughs> hey, man, Pastor Mays, you got something? All right, bear with me a minute. December is always a busy month for us around here as far as the youth is concerned. So uh, we'll start with today. Uh, tonight uh, we have our play practice again. Uh, those of you on the shadow play at uh, 5 o'clock, right? 5 o'clock, I just want to make sure uh, I get, I'm still on the same page here. I've been in the mountains a few days. My head's been in the clouds. So, uh, so 5 o'clock today, teen church tonight at 6.30. Uh, be a part of that, if you will. Master Club this week at 7 o'clock. We'll be back on schedule. We'll have our School of the Bible uh, Tuesday at 6.30. And uh, speaking of School of the Bible, uh, we're about ready uh, this week, uh, uh, Tuesday, and the next week we'll finish up this semester. And then we're getting ready to start semester three in January. So uh, I've seen several people sign up for that. We thank you for that. And you say, well, I've never even taken any of it. Well, go ahead and just sign up for it anyway. Uh, it doesn't matter if you've had one or two. You just jump right in and we'll complete the circle. The sign-up sheet's back at the information desk. Uh, if you want to sign up semester three, we'll start January 19th, I believe. And so if you want to do that and want the books. Now, we're going to try to do it again live stream so you can watch. But uh, the, the course is based on you getting the books. It's $30 for the books. I need you to sign up and have that money in for that by December the 13th. Uh, back there on the information desk so we can go ahead and get the books ordered. And then semester three will kick off in January. Okay, that being said, next week uh, was going to be our family amazing race. And we've had quite a few families sign up, so it's going to be a family thing so we can social distance and all those things. Uh, Miss Jenny has went through the town of Princeton and picked out several uh, clues that you're going to have to go find. We're going to be competing as families uh, for some uh, first, second, and third place gift cards. Uh, I know first place right now is going to be an Olive Garden gift card, so if you like Olive Garden, please sign up for that. That's also back there at the uh, information station. Uh, Christmas caroling for the youth. Uh, instead of going house to house, we're going to be doing a live stream youth Christmas caroling service. So the youth of all ages, we're going to do that December 18th. We need you to sign up for that. That's on the youth bulletin board. And so uh, after that, we will have pizza and play some games and do that uh, for you youth. So and we're going to have some other things for our shut-ins that we'll do at that time. And that will be made known a little bit later to them. But uh, we are going to do that live stream. So we invite you to join us as live stream for that. Uh, also, yeah, the last thing here we have is our uh, this year instead of the angel tree for our bus ministry, since we've not been able to run our buses and uh, may not for a while now, uh, we're going to do in lieu of the angel tree Christmas gifts, 
And since we don't have all their sizes and their wish lists that they always give you, uh, we're going to do dinners for them. And so we're collecting donation items for dinners for our bus uh, ministry families. Uh, the list of what is needed is out on the youth bulletin board, uh, selected items that Miss Jenny has set aside uh, that we ask you to donate. Uh, thank you for many of you who have already signed up. Many of you already brought the food. Uh, so if you do bring the food, we have an area set up in the old fellowship hall to put that. And so we're still looking for uh, donations for that so we can get that and keep Keep our uh, bus ministry youth engaged and let them know that you love them and you're thinking about them. Amen. Thank you. Okay, now on December the 20th, uh, that would normally have been our Sunday for the choir cantata. Of course, we can't do that this year, but we are going to have a Christmas service in the evening and uh, in our evening service at 630 and that'll be held in the gymnasium. And so keep that in mind. If you if you are here a singer and you have a Christmas song you want to sing, you let let us know and we'll put you in there. And uh, uh, or if you've got a Christmas poem you want to read, you know we can't do, we can't do Grandma got run over by a reindeer or anything like that. But <laughs> but uh, you know something you want to read and stuff, huh? Uh, but anyway, uh, you let us know. It's just going to be a, a good time together over there, and the kids are going to do their play again, their shadow play for us, and uh, we're going to sing some Christmas carols, read some Christmas scripture, so it'll be a good time uh, together, together, that'll be the last Sunday before Christmas, and then of course, don't forget our Christmas Eve communion service, we have every year Christmas Eve, and that's at 4 o'clock on Christmas Eve, we invite you to that candlelight service uh, on Christmas Eve, all right, anything else? Oh, yes, sorry, you told me that and I forgot. Night in Bethlehem set up. If you, if you, some of you men can help set that up. That'll be this coming Friday at about 9.30 in the morning. They're going to set the village up back here. And so it takes several hands uh, to get that all stationed together so it won't fall. And uh, so uh, see Brother Tom, if you have, Reynolds, if you have any questions, if you can come and help us this Friday about 9.30 in the morning, that would be a great help. It, uh, and uh, we'll get that set up and ready for this year's night in Bethlehem, which is December the 12th, 5 to 8 p.m. Okay, I need you to stay back for the night in Bethlehem meeting, and we'll get you out of here real fast. So let's stand uh, to be dismissed today. If you're visiting with us, we want you to know you're an honored guest. We're glad you're here. If you'll stop at the Welcome Center, they have a visitor's packet we want you to have to take from here as for being our guest here today. And we appreciate you coming. Our Father, thank you, Lord, for giving us a good time in the house of God on this Lord's Day. Thank you, God, for uh, uh, the many souls that are here today and the many that's listened to us. Pray, Father, that the, uh, the Word of God will grow in their heart, Lord, as they leave this place. Give them safety. Lord, gather us back here after a while, Lord, to practice and to have church tonight. We just ask you, God, to help us. And, Lord, we just thank you for being in our midst this morning. Now, Lord, forgive us of our sin. Lead us away as pleasing unto thee. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So, and